everyone, I'm Laura Gale Locke with your City 7 News Now update. This week our area exceeded the federal limits for ozone, so we brought in Environmental Initiatives Manager Kay Johnson here to tell us more about why this is a big deal and what you can do to help. Kay? Hi Laura Gale, it's very important that people understand what the situation is. This week they may have noticed our air was a little smoggy. Well, it was um, so smoggy that we did exceed the federal limits, the ozone limits. And because of that, um, ozone impacts our health, it impacts the environment, and it can and probably will impact our community. So what types of things caused us to exceed the level then? Well, ozone is formed by sunlight and heat um, interacting with precursor chemicals that are emitted from different processes like manufacturing, uh, like from the tailpipe of cars and, and trucks, from lots of different types of uh, chemicals that are used in everyday life. Uh, things that we use, uh, cleaning solvents and paints and those sorts of things, uh, as well as anything that causes smoke. So any burning um, that we have that can be in the area um, can be a problem. And then of course the weather is a big concern. Mm -hmm. And that's what's caused us to have this recent round of problems. It seems like there's basic things people are doing and they don't even realize they're impacting our air quality. Right. Everyday driving. Um, anybody driving a car, it's tailpipe emissions and we've been fortunate that we have not had to do vehicle tailpipe emission testing like some communities and um, part of the reason is that we've worked with our businesses and industry um, to keep the levels down, but as our economy grows, um, we have more people on the road traveling and more manufacturing processes and more, um, uh, more of everything that causes air pollution. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, maybe you could explain to everybody why it's a big deal when we exceed these levels. Okay, there's an exceedance and then there can be a violation. And last year we had 11 uh, days of exceedances. And anytime you have an exceedance, that means it's over the health-based standard. And that number was 75 parts per million. That means the certain level of ozone in the air. And over the last few years, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency has been type uh, generally reducing that level, um, increasing the standard but lowering the, the number. So we've been dealing with a lowering number and um, last year it was hot and we had weather conditions that caused uh, all of our emissions to stay in the area and we're finding we're having the same issue now. And um, then we have the violation, uh, the health and environment are impacted with just an exceedance, but but the violation is based on a calculation of three years. And it's a very conservative way that they look at, they don't look at one number, in fact they throw, throw the top three numbers out of each year out. So it, it's a very conservative uh, way of looking at the federal violation and um, the problem is, is when if if and when we go out of attainment or out of compliance uh, with a violation of the federal standard, it means a lot of sanctions, a lot of programs that our community is going to have to implement. And implement at our own cost, correct? Uh, absolutely. And businesses and industry that have air quality permits right now, they will probably be impacted first. Um, our community will also be impacted by our transportation dollars. Right now, we receive some transportation dollars that we can do what we want to with it. Um, when and if we go out of compliance with these federal standards, we have to direct those dollars to studies and to make sure that we're not increasing our ozone uh, emissions. So we also could have vehicle inspections for tailpipe inspections. A lot of communities already have that. We, we have not had to have that. Um, those are some of the things um, that are, are really problematic and costs will cost everyone. Even Kansas City has a different type of fuel. We may have to do that too. So with the, if we do go down that road where we have to pay for the, the emission or the tailpipe checks, how much does that cost? Do you know any numbers from other communities? Well, I, I, you know, it could be anywhere from 35 to $50 uh, per inspection, but that really depends on how the, the inspection program is set up. And I know they have it in Missouri and, and other places. 
but what it means is it, it just means it's another program that we have to comply with. And I've heard millions, it would be millions of dollars right. that would cost businesses, a, is a that right? A little study that we did about six or seven years ago, so is still conservative, uh, would be about a $10 million a year impact on the community for 10 years. So it could be a $100 million investment for our community. And that $10 million wouldn't be in any one particular place, but it would be for programs, for the impact to business and industry, and uh, individual inconveniences. And so that's how long they would put these regulations on us is 10 years? Is right. Once you go out of compliance with uh, or, and violate the federal standard, it, uh, you have to work to get back in with your number uh, being reduced. And that means that you have to put in all these different programs to reduce the emissions. But then also it takes um, a while for you to be considered clear, even when your number goes back to the right place. And beyond just the financial impact, there's also a health impact, and maybe you could explain the health concerns. Sure. You know, we've had exceedances uh, every day this week, and what that means is that uh, anybody that exercises outside, they could ha feel an impact. Um, the, the young and the elderly um, are automatically, uh, you know, have the potential to, to trigger asthma, asthma issues if they've got respiratory problems. Anything that they already have a problem with like respiratory or, or heart conditions that causes them to, to breathe heavier. Um, it doesn't cause asthma, but it triggers asthma. It can trigger other respiratory problems. Okay. I know we talked about a few of the things people can do, you know, don't you know, fill up your tank, you know, during the day, wait till after six o'clock, mow after six. What are some other things people can do? Well, you know, it's amazing. We've started an idle reduction program here at the city, and we're also include and encouraging business and local governments and organizations to adopt idle reduction policies. But people don't think about it when they're driving. Um, they may pull over to talk on the cell phone during the heat, but they don't think about just letting their engine run. When you're idling, you're wasting your money and you're going nowhere. So the situation is we want people to think about um, their vehicles and not idle their cars. If they see that they're at a train, stop for a train, or you know, we would like to discourage drive-throughs, but if they feel like um, they need to, if there's more than two cars, turn your car off. Um, and and then start it again when you need to move. The, the thing is, is that a, the, a lot of fuel efficient driving behaviors can be uh, implemented that will save everyone money as well as the environment. Mm -hmm. And so when does the government let us know what our situation is? When will we know after the summer? Well, it really depends on um, the, the recommendations from the state and the Environmental Protection Agency. So we really don't know. We, our ozone season goes from April 1st to October 31st. So until the end of uh, October, we really don't know what our entire uh, picture is for uh, the violation. However, um, by the numbers, uh, we've exceeded every day this week and, and that's not good for our program. All right. Well, Kay, thank you so much for being here and passing along this important information. Well, thanks. And, and they could, um, people that are traveling on Kellogg will probably see the KDOT signs. It mm -hmm. says um, uh, ozone alert, uh, reduce your driving, or uh, ozone alert, uh, refuel in the evening. Those are Kansas Department of Transportation uh, are working with us because it's going to be transportation dollars that we're going to lose if, um, if we violate the standard. It's a good point, and it's good to have those reminders. Right. Thanks so much. <laughs> thank you, Kay. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching this City 7 News Now update.